South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, good day. We're with the amazing Spencer Mbadu. There is nobody that can make a bass sound like Spencer does. I've heard him in so many, many different environments and uh, we were talking a little earlier about uh, Abe Labriel, one of the bassists that reminds me so much of Spencer or reminds me of Abe Labriel is Spencer or vice versa because he really makes the bass speak. Spencer, you started music at what age? Where did you start? How did you start? Was it the bass guitar? Where did you start? Tell us. Good question. Um, this sounds funny. Mm. I received my PhD in music when I was four years of age. <laughs> four years of yeah. age, wow. PhD, plans, yes. hopes and dreams. <laughs> Plans, hopes, and dreams at the age of four. four. Wonderful. Well, Gary, Gary Krill, we just interviewed him today, and he said that his, his mother said that he was, what was he doing? At 13 months, he was playing in his sleep. <laughs> so all of you guys have had similar plans, hopes, and dreams. Yes, sir. Um, can I ask, what is your age? May I? 63. You're 63 years old. Started playing at the age of what? Four? Dabbling? Very early age. Very early. And was it because I, I know you play the piano, you play the bass, you teach, you play, you gig. Um, what did you start out doing? What was your passion? Actually, I started on homemade instruments mm. like uh, um, a bamboo flute, pen okay. whistle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, a homemade guitar, mm -hmm. those three strings, cut strings. Yeah, guitar. yeah, yeah. Then we the Castleton? Yes, then we had uh, a, a Joko T bass. We used to call it a Joko T bass. Okay. Because it was a, a three ply box. Oh. With a hole in the middle. Hole in the a, a, string. A broomstick. Yeah. And then, you know, that would be the bass. Was it just one, one string? Just one, one string. Goom, one goom, string goom, bass. Goom. The more you pull the broomstick, the more it changes the keys. Wow. Mm -hmm. So that's that's how you started out? Yeah, that's where the PhD came from. <laughs> and uh, you, you've you played with many, many bands. Um, Workforce was one of the bands? You Workforce was one of the bands. With Thanks to Lionel Bukas. <laughs> who Lionel Bukas? Oh, he was with Wor Workforce. No, he's was. the one who formed the band. That was Daniel Puka's band. That was when his he band. left. I took over. You took over, right? Because he went overseas or something. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. What a band, eh? Village pub. Always Daniel Puka's. Always and whenever he creates a band, it always becomes a major band. So you respect Lionel very much. So much. Wow. He's played here quite a couple of times. Mm -hmm. What an amazing uh, player. And a lovely... gentleman. Yeah. Can and you a... see from my head. To toe, yeah. Gentlemen. Yeah. And uh, so, so Lionel started Workforce, but before Workforce, because I, I, I remember you playing with various different groups through your life, um, and, and I know you've played with Robbie Jansen, you've played with a lot of the, the local bands. What was. Before Robbie Jansen, I played with uh, Robert Sitole. In the band, I remember. Scaife. I escape. I remember escape. I remember escape. I used to go and was listen named to you guys. by the late Johnny Kretz. Johnny Kretz, that's how right. it happened to be named escape whenever you touch your pocket, somebody's gonna say escape, that's all because they think you're taking out a packet of cigarettes. Can <laughs> <laughs> <In> escape? <laughs> so the band was named escape. I remember escape. What, what a lovely band as well. Mm -hmm. So it was yourself, Josh Sotoli. No, that was uh, 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 Robert Sitoli. Oh, Robert Sitoli. The Quilla, yeah. They were the Quella Kids before. That's right. Yeah, and then when the Quella Kids broke up, and then the scape was open. Mm -hmm. Robbie was, Robert Sitoli was playing with us. Yes. Yeah. So Josh and Robert, were they related? Brothers? Brothers. Yeah. Brothers. Well, I remember. I lived in Saltola. And I don't know how, but they sometime, sometimes ended up playing on the street corners in Saltola. 
Yeah. And I miss the sound of the penny whistle. I miss the sound of that, um, the quella, you know. Uh, are there any quella players around? Any uh, penny whistle players around still? I'm sure, like a buddy was, plays buddy whistles also. I've never heard buddy play, play the penny whistles. I've never, I always hear him play flute and sax, mm -hmm. but I've never heard him play the penny whistle. I'd no, love to hear that. And uh, you, you come from, originally you come from where? Cape Town? I was born in a place called Mcheko Block. Mcheko Block? Mm. At Stan Avenue, Kensington. Okay. Mm. In the olden days they used to call it Mcheko Block. Okay. Why, why Mcheko Block? Um, well, I wouldn't know because uh, also it was more of a multiracial. That was before uh, Fairwood with these ideas. Of, yes, uh, yes. Group areas act. Act, yeah. So, so there were blacks, coloreds, whites, mm -hmm. Jews, we all, all living one. together. Same as Salt River, same yeah. as, as District 6. Then we were moved to a place called Nyanga West. Right. That was 1958. Right. So it makes me older than Kukuletu. That's I'm true. older than Cooks. Yeah. That makes me. <laughs> 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 and uh, 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 do you, re you remember Makoi Murubata? Makoi's father is my cousin. Wonderful. Makoi was our first saxophonist mm -hmm. with the band. His very stitch. first saxophone. Yeah. Came from me. Really? The the tenor saxophone. To, to Makoi? Yes. Wow. He's going to be playing here shortly with Don Laka. Okay. Okoy is going to be here with Don Laka, with Ronnie Laws. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be great. They're doing, they're doing a, a thing called Chasing Train, Coltrane, and the Blue Train. So they're bringing that together and they're filming it here. And uh, I, would, I would love about, it if you could come. Talking about, I would come. Yeah. I would like to meet Ronnie. Yes. I know his brother. Hubert. Yeah. Talking about uh, amazing players, eh? Train. I remember Miles used to say to Coltrane, "Hey man, if you don't know how to stop, just take the damn thing out of your mouth." Because <laughs> <laughs> Coltrane always he used to just solo forever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you did you go and see the movie now with uh, um, what's his name playing um, Miles Davis, the guy from Hotel Rwanda, the actor? No. He plays Miles Davis in, in, in this movie okay. called Miles Ahead or something. But fantastic. I mean, you, you relive the whole I would experience. like to see them. Yeah, very good. Okay. I remember this one guy who had lost his sight. And uh, I was doing something on TV with some American guys. Yes. And then when I got to Joe Beck, first thing he, he heard me from my voice and he said, Spencer! What you guys were doing on 2V was an eye-opener. <laughs> <laughs> and he was blind. And he was blind. But he heard your voice and he recognized you. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So, you, you, you came, you were born in, in Kensington, Kensington, moved to Nyanga. And uh, how did you start getting involved in, were you around the time of Heshu Beshu, Amampondo, obviously, you, yeah, you were those are Piginis. Piginis. <laughs> they were lighties. Yeah, Ringo, 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 Ringo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Os Vietni. Os Vietni. You know, when all those bad yeah. buttercups and all. Yeah. yeah. So, so what, was, what was your um, fascination with music? What got you started? What was the thing that got you involved in your first band and playing and doing what you do best? Now, um, I think uh, I was more encouraged by my grandmother because she was playing the harp at the church and she taught me to play harp. I was very about six, seven years of age. Piano and harp. That's yeah, right. wow. That's where I started. So your mom, your mom was a place. piano player my in the church. Grandmother. Grandmother. Mm. It's amazing, eh? I, I mean, I'm listening to Gary, Gary's story this morning. Gary's mm -hmm. also his. His mother or his grandmother was a guitarist, and that's where the fascination and the passion started. Now you've uh, you've you've worked in Cape Town, you worked around South Africa, you've gone to Sweden four times, you've you've travelled the world through music. 
What is being? I was in Malaysia three weeks, three months back. You went what to the Cape Jazz back? Band. Yes. Now, how was that? It was fantastic. I saw some of the the uh, Paddy Lethal put some of the clips on yeah. YouTube, so I I watched one or two of them. Very nice. And what was the highlight for you? And the guys I went with, like Mark Franzman, oh. Ramon, Alexander, Magic, Magic, uh, um, Jack Mon Jack play. play. No, I mean, you can't, can't go, go wrong with those guys. Yeah. And what was the highlight of 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 your illustrious career? What are the things that that if you look back on Spencer's life, what are highlights for you? Playing with who? With what? With uh, you know where? Uh, jazz festival you you just mentioned to me you you teach at the jazz workshop mm -hmm. and you teach at Krutiske High School anywhere else where you teach Delft okay is that our part of the is that part of the Delft big band no there's a school they call it phase two phase two Delft, yeah okay and so when you look back Spencer what is what is for you the peaks on your on your your life's career, what are the things that really stood? Who did you play with? I mean, international artists. Were you? Uh, did you play with Chick Corea when he came up? Remember the time? <coughs> yes. At Scruples and when Chick Corea came he, to South Africa, yeah. I was in Johannesburg. And uh, oh, you were in Joburg at the time. Yeah, well, so I just the place to there. see Pokumede in Spirits Rejoice. Okay. And see when they opened up the band called Sakile. Right, I then, remember uh, uh, the band leader Duke Makasi, yeah, and Georgie Chefmani, they came to take me up here to Jovek to replace Sipo. Then, when Chikoria came, I was in Johannesburg, even wow. um, uh, the organ player Jimmy Smith. Oh, Jimmy Sam Smith, Tarleton, yeah, I met them that side. Wow, fantastic! And then Chikoria gave me a, a new name, what did he, call he called me his dancing partner. <laughs> because of the way you danced on stage or what? Yeah, he, he came with a bass player by the name of Carlos Bonavet. Yes. Carlos was and Tom Brechtliner yes. was on drums. So um, I had a picture of myself, Chicoria, Lulu Consana on drums, jamming with Chicoria. Wow. What what was that like for you? I mean, because most of us listened to Chick, heard him, he's genius. Uh, but to actually be on stage and play with you? Yeah, I, uh, we were communicating since 1979 with Chikoria. Uh, the time uh, Winston Mankunku started a band called Siabuya at the Beverly Lounge, that was 1979. Yeah, yeah. There I happened to be a part of the band. Right. Uh, Russell Herman on guitar. Uh, wow. Um, Begin Seleku yeah. playing the synth and soprano. We had so many artists in the band. Siabuya. Siabuya. I would. Okay. How many of the guys from Siabuya are still alive? Okay, Winston's gone. Winston is Becky gone. Peggy is gone. gone. Russell is gone. Russell's gone. Archie Fisher, also gone. Wow. Yeah, it's Teach and myself and Stephen Erasmus. Was teach gone. Jean Pierre. Teach the drama. Oh, teach the drama. Okay. And the Stephen Erasmus. Stephen was our vocalist those days. You know, Stephen was here about two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Stephen rocked up here and he sang with us, and we had such fun. Mm. He brought he brought Basil Kutsia's uh, cousin. All right. Yeah, he did, because he wanted to come and visit, and obviously, if he's there, I'm not going to let him sit there. I know his musical prowess, mm. so I called him up, and we had such fun on stage, Stephen. Uh, and I, Stephen is so. So Stephen comes a, a long way, hey. Yeah, he was our vocalist those days. My goodness. So did because I contributed so much in my bass playing. Stephen used to sing bass lines over my ear, and then I would just. Are so you he serious? Do that a lot in my playing. So many of them. Wow. I did. And you would just play by ear, just pick it up. Yeah. Because I remember going to the Beverly Lounge, going to listen to. Um, there was, uh, oh, what was the, the, the there was Osviti, Spirit Rejoice, there was uh, Big, Big Daddy, Big Daddy, Big Daddy yes. um, what, Little Wing, mm -hmm. Stephen played for Big Daddy, didn't he? 
I Pat remember Stevens. going to listen remember to Pat Stevens on drums. That's the guy we couldn't get this morning. Mm. He's now also passed on. Am I correct? I think so, yeah. Yeah. He's the guy, Pat Stevens, the drummer from Horizon. Horizon, yeah. Yeah. So Pat was on drums then. Yeah. And who sang for them? Was it Stephen that sang as well? I don't remember who was. Yeah. I Pat was also doing the singing. Now, Spencer, you, we have done another project together called Songs Worth Singing, Words Worth Saying. And you were interviewed. And whenever I show anybody the clip, um, they just burst out laughing. The story about the old South Africa, where the policeman stopped you guys after you came from the Beverly Lounge. Can you tell, retell that story for us? Uh, yeah, but it's such a scary story because uh, we were You might all, get locked up. <laughs> beside that, we were all drug addicts. <laughs> at the time. At the time. At the time, yeah. The youngest was Jonathan Butler, Butler. and he was it was on his peak of his time. So uh, Butler was making white parts for us. <laughs> <laughs> so we taught him to smoke. Okay. And uh, the late Kada. Kada was also a part of Kada Khan. Kada Khan. Yeah. And Kapti was he not part of it? Kapti didn't. Uh, actually, he sold the drums to us. <laughs> Kapti. <laughs> okay. Mm. Actually, that today I read music. It's because of Kada was the first sight reader. Kada Khan. Kada Khan and yeah. Marcel. Wow. So that's I met Kada's daughter the other day. Lovely. Okay. Lady. Yeah. That's how I got to understand uh, about lines and spaces. Yes. Every good boy drinks Fanta. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. So you learned it like that. Every good boy yeah. drinks Fanta. So like um. Like I used to leave home early because we must have the first three pipes before we go to the rehearsal. So like uh, this morning, coming out of the rehearsal, uh, we walk in, Kada, Robbie, myself, Stephen, Jonathan, and Stephen's brother. Yeah. And I had a Fender chest piece on my hand. Yeah. So a police went drove past and they saw this dark face they reversed and they called me with that You paper. specifically, they came to you? Yeah, but when I looked, Stephen also had a production. <laughs> but mainly they pointed but they came to you and yeah, they yeah. used the K word. Cover, Comiso! So I went, Vavar uh, So I pointed Beverly Lunch. I said, I, I work there, sir. But I don't know, there was something wrong with the because they were talking to me in Afrikaans and I'm answering in English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, they say, What a sort of Tunje? So no, it's pure bass of us. No, I, I play bass, sir. Yeah. But they didn't understand that I play bass. So I tried to translate it in Africans. Expel bass or bass. <laughs> so <laughs> so this so man of, to out it. of the park, he took out the star up. When he was about to hit me, I opened up the case and I took out the bass guitar and I showed Mania expel bass or bass. <laughs> <Just end> bass. <laughs> That is such an incredible story. I mean, it, it depicts the old South Africa. Mm -hmm. It depicts the old South Africa. How, how people were judged on the color of their skin. We were talking this morning, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, Gary Creel was telling us how they had to play behind a, a, a black... If they were playing in a, in a, in a hotel, they had to play behind a curtain and say there were dancers, men, like uh, sexy dancers on the stage. They couldn't be on the stage with the white musicians. They had to play behind the, the, the curtain and they had to look through the holes in the curtain. They wanted to see what was happening. Meanwhile, when the girls used to come past, they used to hit the girls on their backsides and, you know, they, but just because of what people saw, you were not allowed to see colored or black people on the stage with white people or, or looking at white dancers, etc., etc. Tony Shoulder talks about how when he was playing at a hotel with a white band, he was playing that piano in the band, how he would have to eat in the kitchen and the rest of the guys used to eat in the lounge. Hmm. Do you have experiences like that yourself? Definitely. And how it was it? hard. I remember uh, in Johannesburg, 
early hours of the morning on my way to a rehearsal there I'm stopped by two police a black and a white guy and uh, the, uh, the white guy asked me in African uh, what's your pass and I asked no he asked in English where's your reference book then I answered in African so I guess a clear wrong with Trani <laughs> And they didn't, they didn't say anything. And more. the black man was insisting he wanted to see my reference book and they called it a Dom Pass. Yeah, Dom Pass, I remember that. Yeah. And uh, I kept telling him the very same story. I guess a clear long man. What can I with you? And the white policeman said, no, I mean, leave this man. He tells you he's not uh, a black. Just yeah. let him go. So the, and I made a U-turn right there. Didn't go to the restaurant. Back to the taxi. Yeah. Back home. Back home, yeah. Oh, it, it was, was it hard. was it was hard, absolutely hard. And uh, but music brought people together. I mean, there there are I I just remember concerts and events. Um, in fact, Uncle Harold Jeffter, we were talking about Uncle Harold from Sweden. He told me that my dad's brother uh, Neville Robertson ha was the first guy. To create a multiracial gig in the 60s mm. at the Woodstock Town Hall. Wood Woodstock he got Town. all the guys together, white, black, colored. He said it was an amazing and nobody could say anything because the who's who of Cape Town was there, you know, and the audience was mixed, the stage was mixed, and it was a beautiful time. Mm. It was a beautiful time. Music has the ability to bring. People, I mean, like you've played with so many. Buddy Weld, you've played with Vic Higgins, you've played with G Andrew Ford. You, you know, there's there's guys that cross over, and you don't see color. Mm. I mean, you don't I see. You stayed at Vic Higgins' house. You the stayed at Vic Higgins' house. house. Really? And I heard that he was smuggling ganja out of the country. <laughs> and he was locked up in London. Is it? Mm. Sure. Part of the history, eh? But um, what you just said, that music brought people together. Yeah. I wish people like Bishop Tutu or, or, or even Busak, yes. the time of UDF. Yes. We were with UDF going from all those... Meeting people, to meeting. Yes. Playing music. Playing there. music, bringing our people together. That today there's this democracy. That's right. Uh, that's that's why we don't even... Now taste, we spoke about not that. tasting this democracy. It doesn't belong to us. Exactly. I, I no, said... We were, hard. I said, you were the Moses yeah. of the democracy. Yeah. So you, you, Moses when you, 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 you brought the people to, to, the, to the promised land, yes. but you, you're not seeing it in your own life. Definitely. And so many we the spoke about this. The man in back could see. Yeah. Yeah. With his band, Semenza. Yeah. He was one of the Robbie Johnsons. Yeah. The sons of Table Mountain. That's right. They, they brought the whole, brought the people together, sang the songs of freedom, and they haven't seen or tasted of a truly democratic South Africa. Do you feel sad about that? Uh, not really. I Are feel you, quite okay. Is it? It makes me more happier than I was. Yeah, it was worse. It makes me want to play more. Yeah. Than I used to play before. Lovely. Because now I have to prove a point. Absolutely. So, so uh, uh, um, Spencer, you, 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 you love teaching young people as I well. I enjoy that. So, so do, you, do you teach bass guitar or do you teach... And piano. Bass and piano. And drums. And drums. Fantastic. You know how I got to play for Scaife? I was playing drums in a rock and roll band. And the bass player 